Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time, and welcome back if you're returning. So glad you could join us today. So we're going through the EKG Coding Reference Guide, and now we're looking at accelerated junctional rhythm, okay? So we're in our rhythm section, which is this part two, and today we're looking at the accelerated junctional rhythm, okay? So we've been looking at some junctional rhythms here. We'll look at the accelerated form and see what that is and what how it appears on the EKG. We've gone through the general features and the P wave abnormalities in part one, where we looked at left and right atrial enlargement. Uh, we've gone through a number of different rhythms. We went through the sinus rhythm, the atrial rhythms, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation. So you can go back and watch those. Now, those of you that don't have access, what you wanna do is simply put this link here into your search bar, into your email, click submit. After you click submit, you'll get an email and from that email, you'll get a link. And from there, you will get to the reference guide and you'll hit this drop down menu and go to accelerated junctional rhythm where we are. Okay. Now, if you're returning, obviously you can put your email in and you'll bypass all that. That's just for the first time users. So we confirm your email. Okay. So hopefully uh, you're enjoying this process so far, but let's get started with this accelerated junctional rhythm. So accelerated AV junctional rhythm, okay? This is a typical, regular, narrow QRS complex uh, rhythm, just like we saw with all our other junctional rhythms. And as we said, what really differentiates these rhythms, all these junctional rhythms, is the rate, okay? The ventricular rate. But let's go back and review our anatomy just so we keep pounding this down and we really get it, okay? Using our box diagrams to understand where this rhythm is coming from. So this is the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and left ventricle. Remember, we have our conduction system that sits up here, or starts at our sinus node or the sinal atrial or SA node, high in the right atrium near the superior vena cava. And then from there, you have these internodal pathways that come to an AV node. So this is the sinus node. This is the AV node. From You also have a Bachmann bundle that comes to the left atrium. You have a His bundle that then subdivides into a right bundle branch, which is this here. And then you have a left bundle branch. And the left bundle branch has, has two fascicles. It has a left anterior fascicle, and it also has a left posterior fascicle. Okay, and then you have the ventricular Purkinje system on both sides. They innervate the individual cardiomyocytes of the cells. And that's really how conduction starts. So remember, when we talked about sinus rhythms, we said that it's pretty much originating up in the sinus node. All right, if it's an atrial rhythm, originating from the atrial rhythm, uh, rhythm or atria. And then if it's an AV junctional rhythm, we're saying that it's uh, originating from within this region here, okay? And what we have is because the rhythm or the origins above it are not conducting or not conducting fast enough, okay? Now, if you can imagine, the normal intrinsic rate of the sinus node is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. That of this AV junctional region is between 40 and 60, okay? And then that in the ventricles is between 20 and 40 beats per minute. So you can envision that if you had a rhythm in this sinus area that say the sinus node was firing at 65 beats per minute you have a healthy young athlete uh, slow sinus rhythm okay um, or even someone with sinus node dysfunction and it's just firing at a slower rate or even on maybe some beta blockers that's slowing it okay imagine that patient has sinus tachycardia or some other uh, faster rate and is being controlled or even has you know paroxysmal atrial fibrillation with RVR and they're controlling with some sort of beta blocker or something and it's you know you're set at 65 beats per minute imagine that there's a rhythm okay or a focus in this AV junctional region that is firing at 70 beats per minute so even though above that intrinsic rate but it's firing a little faster okay and that's where we get this accelerated AV junctional rhythm from okay so it's a what we see is a typical regular narrow QRS complex, okay? Or unless there's underlying uh, pre-existing intraventricular conduction delay, or there's presence of aberrancy. But you'll see the normal conduction because if the rhythm is originating from this area, everything below it should be fine, okay? So that's why, and remember the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. Now you may have retrograde conduction going backwards, that is, and you may see a P wave because atrial depolarization. Okay, so if you have the impulse going 
anterograde and retrograde, you may see a P wave in a QRS complex, but you can envision that the small P wave or the P wave in relative size to the QRS complex is smaller, so it may actually be buried within the QRS complex. And you may even see a change in the axis of the P wave as it moves away from its normal direction. It's pretty much going opposite from those inferior leads, and you may see inverted P waves in those leads. Okay. All right. So that's what uh, we have here. Now, what makes it different? We said these junctional rhythms are the rate. Okay. So let's go over these junctional rhythms. And the first one is when the rate is less than 40 beats per minute. Okay, because remember, the intrinsic rate is here, 40 to 60. We have one when it's between 40 and 60 beats per minute. Okay, and that's simply called a junctional rhythm. And then we have a one that's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. And then we have when it's over 100 beats per minute. Okay, and you really want to keep going over these and over these, and they'll start to click. So when it's less than 40 beats per minute, we call that junctional bradycardia, okay? And I'm just uh, abbreviating them. Now, when the rate is over 100, we call that a junctional tachycardia, okay? And then, what happens when it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute? And this one sometimes gets forgotten, but this is called an accelerated junctional rhythm. Okay, and that's what we're focusing on in this lecture is the rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Okay, so again, typically regular narrow QRS complex that we, as we've been seeing with all these junctional rhythms, unless there's some underlying intraventricular conduction delay, the ventricular rate dictates the name. Remember, less than 40 is the bradycardia. Between 40 and 60 is the rhythm. 60 to 100 is faster, so we call it accelerated. And if it's over 100, that's a tachycardia like any other. We said that the P waves are often absent or buried within the QRS complex, okay? They may occur immediately before or after, depending where it's originating from, and you can have a change in the axis of the P wave. So let's look at this EKG. So notice that in this EKG, and it probably is best to look down here in V5, notice that there's no P wave preceding any of these. Okay, no P wave at all. And it's a regular rhythm, meaning that the intervals from one R wave to the next are the same. So if you were to measure these out, you notice that there's not really any difference between the interval duration. Okay, so because the intervals are the same, uh, we know this is a regular rhythm. It's a narrow QRS complex, okay, because remember the QRS complex. Imagine this is your P wave, this is the QRS, and this is the T wave. We're looking at the width from beginning to end, and normally it should be less than 120 milliseconds, or three small of boxes, okay? And that is the case here. And then we mentioned the rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute to call it an accelerated junctional rhythm, okay? So let's check out the rate here. So we know from beginning to end of our standard 12 lead EKG is 10 seconds. 10 seconds times six is 60 seconds which is one minute, okay? And then you want to simply count the number of ventricular complexes. So you can use the T waves or the QRS complexes, multiply by six, and you get the rate in beats per minute. So let's do that here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 times six, if I did my math right, it should be about 96 beats per minute. And that is certainly between the 60 and 100 beats per minute. So getting close to actually a junctional tachycardia. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense there. And you can see it's still below 100 because if you see this QRS complex in here and the next one, there is at least three thick lines between it, okay? So if you do 300 divided by the number of those thicker lines, it's 300 over three, which is 100 beats per minute in a regular rhythm, which we have here, 
but it's a little more than that. So it's actually less than 100 beats per minute, but certainly over 75 beats per minute, okay? There's not four between it because if you had 300 over four of those thick lines, it's 75. So it's certainly between 75 and 100, but closer to 100 as we saw, okay? So a few ways you can find the rate that we go over elsewhere. But hopefully this makes sense. So an accelerated AV junctional rhythm, you have a rhythm that's originating from that AV junctional region at an intrinsic rate above it, okay, above the 40 to 60 beats per minute and below 100. So it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute. It's a typically a regular uh, rhythm with narrow complexes unless there's underlying pre-existing intraventricular con conduction delay or the presence of any aberrant uh, maybe pathway. Remember the ventricular rate is what differentiates these rhythms and we saw between 60 and 100 is our accelerated junctional rhythm. We looked at an example here and remember the P waves are often absent because conduction if it's retrograde okay is often buried within the QRS complex because they're almost happening simultaneously. All right. If you do see P waves, they tend to have a different morphology, and that's something you should be aware of. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense here. Uh, this is a good example and uh, another way of how we can look at these junctional rhythms. Okay. So you can see junctional rhythms. As long as you know this here, you should be able to differentiate them all. All right. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources 
which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.